due alone may not be sufficient to supply our drinking water, but we need far larger quantities of premium water. Most, if not all, this water can be collected from rain on the roof. A big issue for those unenlightened people still using water toilets is the water that goes down the toilet. We are talking in terms of three to four hundred litres for a typical family. This is some 40 times the amount of water we use for drinking and cooking. We have a highly variable rainfall. The average may be about a metre, but some years we may only get half of that. The roof area of my house is 250 square metres. Even in a dry year, with less than half the average rainfall, that gives a total catchment of 128,000 litres, or 340 litres per day, which meets all household requirements. The issue with premium water is quality, not quantity. There is more than enough. Fortunately, there are not too many cows on my roof, but there are birds, which sometimes sound like cows, and they do shit. Not much, but it is there. Most people on the park use some form of initial flush to wash the roof. I simply use an extended downpipe, which has to fill first before water flows into the tank. For drinking water, many people on the park will also use a filter. The better ones have a container to add the trace elements, so the quality and taste is really pretty good. Uh, this is the tap water, and, and it seems to have some discoloration from gum leaves in it, in getting into the tank. The filter has three levels. It's ceramic, uh, carbon, and silver nitrate. You can take the water out the bottom here. And as you can see, it's crystal clear. Premium water may not be a problem, but we do have two major problems at our eco-village. One major problem at the village is that the houses are close to a watercourse, which although normally dried up, fills our dams during the rainy season. We don't want our dams contaminated by our waste and sewage water, so we have to find some way of using that water safely. How do we stop any waste water polluting our water sources? Many people assume that sewage is the major problem. True, it does contain some pathogens, but it is rich in nitrogen which helps decomposition and is free of heavy metals, unless you are in the habit of munching batteries. Ice cream with batteries on top. Can I have a battery? Yes. <laughs> Grey water is the real problem. Food particles are no problem. It is the fats which are resistant to decomposition, salts, heavy metals and the soaps and detergents used in cleaning. These can be minimised by using environmentally sensitive agents. The worst possible method is to store grey water in a tank, which allows the pathogens to build up, then spray the foul brew onto the ground. The correct approach is to get the wastewater straight into the ground, where breakdown can start, and prevent any water escaping at least for an adequate period of time when a controlled flush may be needed. Sewage will readily break down by a simple microbiological action, but grey water is best treated with worms. Worms are continuously breeding and the eggs are remarkably resistant. There are special breeds of worms which will chop their way through fats and all sorts of nasties. I've got in my hand here three different types of worms. This one here, the larger one's called an African night crawler. This one here is called a tiger. And this one here is called a Spencerailia. Now the Spencerailia is an Australian native worm. And he's probably one of the best worms that you can have for eating this fatty sort of material. And what we're doing is a lot more research on that worm because he's very active, breeds a lot. You can see how he's wriggling much more than the others. He breeds very rapidly and he consumes a lot of material in a short period of time. And he'll actually consume fatty products, meats, fats, oils, all sorts of really the harder to break down type organic material. The answer is the wicking bed. The basic idea is simple. Create an underground water tank 
so there is no leakage of contaminated water and let the water wick upwards to irrigate our plants. Dig a trench, line the trench with polyethylene film which will become what is essentially an underground water tank. Some form of porous medium or drainage pipe is laid in the bottom so water can flow along the tank which is then backfilled with a mixture of soil, organic material and worm cusks containing a good supply of worm eggs of a suitable species. If you are using wastewater we would select a breed which will consume the fats found in grey water. The worms turn the soil into what is essentially a large sponge which can hold significant quantities of water which will wick upwards to nourish the plants. The trench is divided into horizontal sections by small barricades so water only flows up over into the next section when the previous section is filled. This gives a cascade effect to ensure that water is flushed from bay to bay without mixing clean and dirty water. As the water moves from bay to bay it is progressively purified by the worms and the bacteria. After a long period the system will need to be flushed to remove the accumulated salts and heavy metals. The wicking beds must be large enough so that all wastewater generated throughout the wet period can be stored or evaporated. In the dry period extra water is added to the wastewater to irrigate the plants and when needed provide a controlled flush to remove any salt buildup and balance the pH, often a problem when using wastewater. The wicking bed system is a highly efficient irrigation system. Well the amazing thing is that this garden here is only about six weeks planted in fact and these broccoli that you can see are absolutely fantastic. This is a garden system that's done using the wicking method. There's no loss of water, contaminants or nutrients into the water table and evaporation is very small so virtually all the water is used by the plants. Even recycling our wastewater does not solve our second problem, providing enough water for our plants. Irrigation is the major user of water far exceeding all other uses. To solve this problem, we'll have to look at the techniques used by the North American tribes and how we can apply these simple principles by using modern materials and technology. We will look at this in the next episode.